How do you do the lighting for gritty lighting? Uh, do you light them like from the front, just a soft box straight on? Yeah, often from behind, so you get that kind of light reflecting off the side. The thing about showing up the texture is for the light to be kind of skimming across. If you shine something straight on, the light goes in, hits the bottom, comes straight back out, and you don't see the surface. It's just like on a full moon, the moon is just kind of this round, evenly smooth disk. But have you ever gotten like a telephoto lens and look real close at the moon when it's like a, you know, a half moon or a quarter moon? The lit side is, you know, kind of grayish, but then you can see all the little speckles of the craters as the light skims across sideways. So that raking light is kind of key to the gritty lighting. Um, I'm going to show you some examples that students have done in the past. And you can see that light coming from behind. You get the reflection off the side, not a lot on the front, and you get that kind of high contrast. Now, is this something that you can kind of do after the fact in Photoshop? Not really. With pretty much anything, if you can get it right in camera, so much the better. If you can do it in camera, do it. That being said, you can tweak things afterwards. We'll take a look at some techniques you could use to kind of enhance the grittyosity of your images in Photoshop after. But let me just talk about what you can do with these images afterwards. Like here, this guy was photographed on black. There was the lights coming from behind, and he was punching something. Um, I'm guessing something that was quite dusty. So you got all this kind of dust coming out. If you wanted to put them out onto a different background, that's one of the things we're going to take a look at today. Cutting things out, putting them on different backgrounds. Here's an example of him cut out and dropped onto a different background. So this is him hanging out in, uh, I guess, Quebec City. Now, the cutout around here, I mean, we looked last year at cutting out that flower. Uh, remember there's that hanging orchid? We cut it out and put it on a donut because, you know, why not? Uh, we looked at using the pen tool. We looked at channel masking, all kinds of ways of cutting out things from their backgrounds. But what about something like this, this powder back here? Well, if you look at the original image, it was shot on black, and yet we can see through it. How would you cut out something like that? Different blending modes could work, like if we disable the layer mask. You can see it through there. So blending modes can help. Uh, it doesn't do very good stuff for him, though. What do we do about that? You can do it in multiple layers. Look here. So here's a separate layer where we've got the back part here cut out. Play with the blending mode, uh, and you can see through. It didn't work for him very well, so we take him, and you'll notice that he's actually cut out. And if we turn off this back layer here, there's no dust. So that dust is being put on by this separate layer here. And it lines up, and there it is. So you can do things in multiple sections. So that's an example of him put onto a different background. Again, shot on a black background. And what's causing this? Is it? light reflecting off the back of her neck. Where's the light? It's actually right behind her, shining right into the camera. So she's partially blocking it, kind of like if you know you got the sun behind somebody, you get the little lens flares kind of coming out. So the light is right behind her. That also makes things really tough to cut out. Here is this image with a different background. In this case, a football field. And if you look at the layer mask that cuts her out, you can see it's a good clean cut out around the hand, the forehead, and oh, around the back where that lens flare was, it's simply cut off and brought in in a different layer. So if there's things you need to pull up into separate layers, maybe you need to play around with some blending modes, don't be afraid to do as many layers as you need or as many attempts on making that layer mask as you need. So maybe if they'd wanted to keep this soft, fluffy hair around here, you might use a channel mask around the back part of the hair. Do a channel mask to get all that detail. But then a channel mask wouldn't work up here because there's not enough contrast between the foreground and the background. So maybe then you'd go in by hand. Choose an appropriate size brush. Do that shift clicking around the outside to outline it, just like we did when we changed the uh, color of the flower around that girl's neck. Remember there's the girl, she had that red flower around her neck and we made it blue. We went all the way around the outside. Uh, we did the same thing actually when we cut out the orchid. We went all the way around the outside and then filled the background with black to hide it. So don't be afraid to use multiple different techniques. So there's the original image in the studio. There she is cut out onto a gray background. There she is with the baseball field. So think about what you might want to put in behind it. There's the guy on, uh, on lava. This is the image we used back in first semester when we were talking about color temperature and how, you know, like 5,000 Kelvin is daylight, you know, 2,000 Kelvin is tungsten. And you can actually tell the temperature of the lava. Here it's around 2,400 Kelvins, down to around like 1,800 Kelvins, cools down to below 1,000. Very cool. And of course, this guy compositing because, you know, who doesn't want a guy coming out of lava and punching you?